Hello and welcome to a new Pixelmator tutorial here on Touch Plus. My name is Sebastian van der Velden and in this tutorial we will dive into the concept of layers. Pixelmator lets us stack images on top of one another in the form of layers. All this is done in the layers palette. If you followed our previous tutorials, you already have used the layers palette to add and remove layers by using the plus and minus buttons over here. In this tutorial, we will make a collage consisting of four photos in order to explain the concepts of layers. I have the first photo already opened here. This is originally a JPEG image. And what Pixelmator does by default when opening images is looking at the file format. If the file format is not the native Pixelmator document format, then Pixelmator will import your image into a new Pixelmator document with a name from the original file. So in our case with this JPEG image, we are now looking at a new Pixelmator document where the JPEG image is added as a new layer. By default the first layer is called background layer. We will now add our next photo. We can do this by simply dragging the desired photo onto the document window. If you want to center the new photo onto the canvas, you can hold the shift key while dragging and dropping. What happened now is that our second photo got added on top of our first photo and into a new layer. I want to place this photo at the top right side of my first photo. To get a better overview, I zoom out by pressing command and minus several times and adjusting the document window a bit. Let's use the move tool to move the photo around. As you can see, not all of the image is visible. Not even when I zoom out and adjust the document window. The canvas isn't big enough. I want to place this photo against the top right side of our first photo. We need to make the canvas bigger in order to do this. But how much more canvas do we need? We can find that out by showing the info bar. Go to the view menu and choose show info bar. A new bar appears under the tool options bar. Here we get some technical details regarding our document, the current selected layer and objects on these layers. On the top right over here, we see our current zoom status and the current canvas size. On the left side, we get information about the color the mouse pointer is on and the location of the mouse pointer on the canvas. When we select the top layer and click on the new photo with the move tool, we see the width and height of this photo in pixels. For our photo, the width is 796 pixels and the height is 754. We can use this information to increase the canvas size. In our case, we want to extend the canvas to the right with 796 pixels, exactly the width of our second photo. Let's go to the image menu and choose canvas size. Our current canvas size is displayed. Make sure the units are set to pixels. The figure over here says something about the directions the canvas is going to be changed in. So if I enter 300 for the width, you see all arrows except those corresponding to the height pointing inwards, meaning that my canvas will decrease in size in all directions except the height. What we want is to increase our canvas only to the right. To do this, we of course have to change the width, but also make sure the canvas only increases to the right side. We can do this by clicking on the leftmost arrow. This moves the blue block representing the original canvas to the left and we see that we get more space to the right, which is exactly what we want. Now remember we want to expand our canvas by 796 pixels. We can either add these to the original 632 pixels and type 1428, but we can also increase the canvas using relative values and select the checkbox with the name relative. Our original values are now zero. We will fill out 796 for the width and leave the height at zero. Then we press OK. A large block with the checkerboard pattern gets glued onto the right of our original image. The checkered pattern stands for transparency. Also it is part of the image, but it will show as transparency. We can now move our photo to the top right and you see that it will snap in place perfectly. Let's add the third photo by dragging and dropping it onto our document window. 
Let's place this image on the lower right. You see that this photo covers both previous photos. And as we look at the layers palette, we see that this photo is placed on a layer on top of all other layers. To fit this image better into the collage, we can either resize the photo or align it differently. Let me demonstrate you both methods. When you have the Move tool activated and click on the photo, you see four transform handles appear. I can use these to resize the photo like this. You see that the auto alignment features of Pixelmator make the photo snap in place. In most cases, you want to maintain the proportions, but if you don't want this, you can turn it off by deselecting Constraint Proportions in the Tool Options bar. Now we can deform the whole photo if you want to. When satisfied, we can click on the OK button on the Tool Options bar or press Enter on our keyboard. For now, I will cancel as I prefer to align this photo better. When resizing content on a layer, it is important to understand that you are indeed resizing the content on a layer and not resizing the layer itself. A layer in Pixelmator is always the same size as the canvas. It is solely the object on a layer that we are editing. Everything outside of the object is part of the canvas and transparent. As you can see, when I temporarily hide our two first layers by removing their corresponding check marks in the layers palette. When I now move my latest photo further to the right and down, I move it partially outside of the canvas and thus outside of the layer. Let's add our fourth and final photo to the collage. I want to muffle this photo in between the other photos. Preferably, I want to tuck it under the first photo with the road. To do this, I can click and drag the layer with the road photo and stack it on top of the photo with the sheep, just like this. When dragging around layers like this, you might want to make sure that you have the Move tool set to Auto Select. You can do this by clicking on the gear icon in the Tool Options bar and selecting Auto Select. This way, whenever you click on one of the photos, the layer this photo is on gets automatically selected and moved. The top part of the photo with the sheep is covering too much of our second photo. I want to remove a part of the top of the sheep photo. I can do this in several ways. I can for example select the part I want to remove with the rectangular marquee tool and simply delete it by hitting the backspace key. However, this is a rather destructive method of working because I might not be able to recover the deleted part of this photo would I ever change my mind. A better way is hiding the top part instead of removing or deleting it. In Pixelmator we can do this with the help of a layer mask. To add a layer mask we can ctrl click on the layer we want to add our mask to and choose add mask. A new thumbnail appears on the right of the layer thumbnail filled with white. The blue line around the thumbnail tells us now that we have selected the layer mask. Let's see what part of the photo we want to hide. On the bottom of the layers palette there is an opacity slider. This lets us adjust the opacity of the current selected layer. You see that when lowering it, the layers underneath show through slightly. We can use the opacity slider for many things and now we are using it to be able to determine more easily which part of the photo with the sheep we want to hide. I select the rectangular marquee tool and draw a selection over the part that I think we can hide. Note that I still have the layer mask selected. I'm going to fill the selection with black by opening the edit menu and choosing fill. Make sure the color is black and click OK to confirm. What happens now is that the part of the layer mask that we have selected gets filled with black, resulting in the disappearing of the top part of the photo with the sheeps. You see that the photos above and under the photo with the sheeps aren't the same height making the whole collage look a bit out of balance. If I would use the Move tool now to do this, I would be moving the whole layer, both photo and the mask. This is of course a solution, but not what I want right now. Because I don't want to hide the little flag of glacier here. Let's take a closer look at this layer with the layer mask. Do you see the link icon in between the two thumbnails? This means that both the image and the layer mask are linked together. 
meaning that whenever I move the image or the mask around, one, of the, one or the other will follow. We can break this link by simply clicking on it. Now I'm able to move both the image and the mask separately, as you see here. Now I can move the photo with the sheep upwards and the mask stays in place. But look what happens when we move the image too far upwards. It gets past the mask and gets visible again. No problem, we can select the mask in the layers palette, the transform handles appear around the mask and I can now easily increase the mask size upwards. You see that constraint proportion is activated by default. This isn't necessary in our case now, so we can turn it off and resize the mask better when we need to. To help you align the photos more precisely, you can get help of course by using the grid. Just go to the view menu and choose show grid. Now we really can fine tune the distribution of our photos. You see that we have quite a lot of layers in our document. To keep track of which layers has which photo on it, I can change the name of the layer. To change the name of a layer, just double click on the name. Let's change the name of the layer with the photo of the road to road, and the layer of the photo with the sheep to sheep, etc. We can also group layers together. This is done by selecting the layers we want to group by clicking on them while holding the command or the shift key. Ctrl click on one of the selected layers and choose group. We can rename the group to photos for example. And when we click on the little triangle, we can open and close the group. Let's add some finishing touches. Let's create some simple borders by using the pen tool. Activate the pen tool. I want to make white borders that are about 10 pixels wide. So in the tool options bar, I choose color for the stroke, a width of 10 pixels and white as the color. Make sure we have no shadow selected. Click a little bit outside of the canvas for your starting point and then click on the end point and click again to make a straight line. If you are like me and need help keeping the angle straight, then you can hold the shift key while moving the mouse and clicking on the end point. Click on the enter key on the keyboard to stop drawing. We end up with a straight vertical line that we can easily drag in place. Pixelmator's auto align and snapping makes this a breeze. You see that Pixelmator has added a new layer with the name Shape. This is a shape layer. Shape layers are special layers in Pixelmator that only can contain vector graphics. The other and third type of layer in Pixelmator is the type layer. Type layers can only contain text. Let's add two horizontal lines on the same shape layer. So we select the pen tool again and put the mode to add mode. This will add the new lines to the already existing shape layer. Let's draw two horizontal lines in the same way as we did with the vertical line. To create a white border around the whole image, we will use another method. First we control click on the shape layer and choose convert into pixels. What we have done now is converting the shape layer with vectors to a standard rasterized layer. With the top layer selected, we press command plus A. This will make a selection around the whole image. Open the edit menu and choose stroke. For the stroke we use of course white as the color, 10 pixels and width, and we apply the stroke on the inside of the selection. After clicking OK, we can change the name of the layer to borders and we have ended up with a nice collage. By making this collage, we have covered some of the essential concepts of working with layers. We've seen how objects on layers overlap according to the order the layers are stacked in. We've aligned objects on different layers and we've used a layer mask to hide parts of an object. We've also seen how we can move an object and a layer mask separately from one another. Finally, we've grouped and named layers and we've seen that Pixelmator supports three different types of layers. There is so much more we can do in Pixelmator with layers and this we will go into in our upcoming tutorials.